Hello everyone, I am your chemistry teacher, Professor Sachin Mundage. Welcomes all of you in Sanjeevani Lecture Management System. In the last class, we discuss about the corrosion prevention methods. That is, we are going to protect our metal from the corrosion, and for that, we have used the four methods or studied the four methods to protect metal from the corrosion. In today's class, we are going to discuss about the electrochemistry. So let us start with the electrochemistry. What do you mean by the electrochemistry? Electrochemistry is a branch of science which are dealing with the study of conversion of chemical energy into the electrical energy and vice versa. So electrochemistry is a branch of science which are dealing with the study of conversion of chemical energy into electrical energy and also the electrical energy are converted into the chemical energy. So simply it is a branch of science which are dealing with the study of conversion of chemical energy to the electrical energy and vice versa means again electrical energy are converted into the chemical energy. Means the study of chemical decomposition of electrolyte take place when electrical current is passed into the electrolyte and the production of electricity when the chemical changes happen. So that is simply called the electrochemistry. The simplest example of electrochemistry is your inverter battery. What happened during charging and discharging? When chemical energy are converted into the electrical energy, where the chemical decomposition of the electrolyte start. You know that your battery contains the acid and that acid is nothing but the chemical. Okay, so the chemical decomposition of electrolyte start. So when the chemical energy is converted into the electrical energy, means the chemical changes produces the electrical energy, at that time the discharging start. And once the battery discharged, at that time we pass the electrical current into the battery where the reverse reaction happen or the occurs where the chemical decomposition of the electrolyte start when the electrical, electrical current is passed into the battery. So that simple phenomena is said to be a electrochemistry. Some of the significance of the terms which are involved in electrolytes we are, we are going to study the some of the significance of the terms which are involved in the electrolysis. Okay, some of the terms. So first of all, what do you mean by electrolysis? Electrolysis is a process by which the chemical decomposition of electrolyte take place when electrical current is passed into the electrolyte. So that process is said to be a electrolysis. So say for example, this is the electrolyte. So, this is the example of the electrolyte. So for example, diamond sulfuric acid. Diamond sulfuric acid is the electrolyte. So generally your dilute sulfuric acid they are present in a battery, inverter battery. Okay. So this is the example of the electrolyte. What happens when electrical current is passed into the electrolyte, at that time the chemical decomposition of the electrolyte takes place. Chemical decomposition in the sense the ionization takes place and the form ions, means the cation and the ions, they are migrated toward the oppositely charged electrons. Means the cation means say for example H plus is a cation is migrated toward the cathode and the anion they are migrated toward the anode where the chemical or the electrical discharge take place and the chemical decomposition of the electrolyte take place. So simply the process in which the chemical decomposition of electrolyte, electrolyte is the sulfuric acid, the chemical decomposition of electrolyte take place but when when electrical current is passed into the electrolyte when electrical current is passed into the electrolyte at that time the chemical decomposition of the electrolyte start that process are said to be a electrolysis okay so we are familiar with the electrolysis so it is a question that comes in our mind what do we mean by the electrolyte so what is the electrolyte? Electrolyte is a substance which are in an aqueous, aqueous form or in an aqueous state, aqueous solution. Aqueous solution in the sense the solution in which the water is used as a solvent. Say for example, NaCl 
is a substance. Okay. When we add the water in the NaCl, you will get the formation of NaCl solution. So that solution also to be an aqueous solution. So sodium chloride is in a aqueous state. Means here the water is the solvent in a solution. So the substance which is in a aqueous state, in a aqueous state in the sense the aqueous solution in which the water is used as a solvent or either in a molten state or in a fused state. Molten. Molten or fused. Molten in the sense that substance that is at its melting temperature. That is called as the molten state or fused in the state similar way that substance that heated to its melting temperature so either that substance in a aqueous state or either in a molten state which liberate ions which produce the ions okay so that substance are said to be electrolyte that substance are said to be a electrolyte so for example in a cl with a substance which in which state that is in a solid state okay when we add the water, we will get the formation of what NaCl solution. Okay. So what is the electrolyte? The substance either in a aqueous state, that is an aqueous solution, or either in a molten state. When NaCl, when the heat ends, we will get the formation of NaCl, but in a what? Liquid or in a molten state. Okay. Which liberate the ions, which liberate the ions in the sense the ionization takes place and you will get Na plus and Cl minus. So that substance are said to be a electrolyte. So for example, acid, acid, for example, HCl, H2SO4, these are the substances are said to be a electrolyte. For example, base, for example, NOH, KOH, these are the example of the bases. Ionic salts, what are the electrovalent salt? Example, NaCl, KCl, these are the example of the electrolytes. Electrolytes are of two types. The first is called as the strong electrolyte. And the second is called as the weak electrolyte. So which electrolyte are said to be a strong electrolyte and which electrolyte are said to be a weak electrolyte. So the electrolyte which are highly ionized in a solution, highly ionized and therefore the electrolyte which are highly ionized in a solution has high degree of ionization. That electrolyte are said to be a strong electrolyte. For example, the mineral acids, they are highly ionized in a solution, highly ionized means their ionization is very high. They have a tendency to, to produce a more number of ions in a solution, more number of ions. So they are said to be a highly ionized. They are highly ionized in a solution means that electrolyte having a tendency to produce the more number of ions in a solution. Okay. So the mineral acids, that is your strong acids, for example, SCL, sulfuric acid are said to be a strong electrolyte because they have a tendency to produce the more number of ions in a solution. So they are highly ionized in a solution and that's why they have a high degree of ionization in a solution. So they are said to be a simply strong acids that is the strong electrolyte. Mineral acid that is called as the strong acid is the example of the strong electrolyte. Then your strong bases for example NaOH, sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide they have the ability to produce the more number of ions in a solution. So they comes in a category that is a strong electrolyte. Soluble salts means uh, these are the salts which are soluble in the water. For example, sodium chloride they are soluble in the water. Potassium chloride they are soluble in the water. So soluble salts also have a high degree of ionization in a solution. Means they are having the ability to produce the more number of ions. So they are also considered as a strong electrolyte. Weak electrolyte is exactly opposite to the strong electrolyte means the electrolyte which are weakly ionized or feebly ionized in a solution are said to be a weak electrolyte means the electrolyte they does not have a tendency to produce the more number of ions means whatever the ions are produced in a solution is weak means 
thimbly ionization or the weak ionization of that electrolyte take place in a solution as it will be a weak electrolyte. So, say for example, the organic acids, uh, it is called as the organic acids in the sense weak acids. Uh, organic acid, for example, your acetic acid. Acetic acid is the example of weak electrolyte, or either the oxalic acid is the example of the weak acid. So generally organic acid or the weak acid is the example of the weak electrolyte because they have the weak ionization in a solution. So whatever the amount of ions which are produced in a solution is very low, is a weak. So that's why they are said to be a weak electrolyte. Weak basis is the example of your uh, weak electrolyte. Weak basis for example NH4OH. Ammonium hydroxide is the example of what the weak electrolyte that is the example of the weak base. Some of the insoluble salt may be your barium sulfate and aluminium hydroxide. These are the insoluble salts, means they are not soluble in a water. Insoluble in the sense they are soluble in a water, but their ionization is very weak. So they are not uh, they are not having uh, high capacity or the ability to produce the more number of ions. So here the ionization takes place, but whatever the ions which is obtained after the ionization is low in a concentration or low in a amount. So a barium sulfate is an insoluble salt, aluminum hydroxide is an insoluble salt. These are the example of the weak electrolyte. So that is all about the electrolyte. Okay. Moving on to the next one, that is your electrolytic. Cell. Electrolytic cell. So electrolytic cell is the, the apparatus of convenient shape, size or either the volume in which the electrolysis reaction is carried out. So uh, any apparatus, uh, say for example the apparatus which are made from the glass. Okay. So here we can take the example of the say glass beaker or that apparatus either they are made from the steel also or the plastic okay so any apparatus of convenient shape size and volume in which this electrolysis reaction is carried out that type of the uh, cell or that type of the material are said to be a electrolytic cell for example the glass beaker okay so we discuss about the first one uh, the electrochemistry then the second uh, term that is the electrolysis Third one that is the electrolyte. Electrolytes are of two types strong electrolyte and a weak electrolyte, and the fourth one is your electrolytic cell. Okay. The next one is the electrode. So electrode in the sense any metallic or the non-metallic material when they are immersed in a solution, when they are immersed in a electrolyte, they are said to be a conductor any metallic material or the non-metallic material for example you are any metal metallic material in the sense any metallic material for example you are any metal or either the alloy okay so materials they are made from the either metal or either alloy or non-metallic material for example plastic when any metallic material or the non-metallic material when they are dipped or immersed in a electrolyte they are said to be a electrolyte say for example this is your copper plate okay and copper plate is a deep in say for example electrolyte H2SO4 so this copper plate are said to be a electrode ok so this is the example of what metallic material you can consider the example of plastic also so they are said to be electrode so electrode is a kamchai the electrode gives the electron gives out the electron into the solution and take out the electron from the solution. So electrons are given and electrons are accepted by the electrode. That is the role of your electrode. So for, for example, here yes. the copper use the electron to the ions which are present in a solution and ions use the electron to the electrode that is the metal. So electrons are given and electrons are accepted. So from the battery electrons are given to the ions and from the ions the electrons are accepted and send it to the battery this is the role of your electrode okay then the next one is cathode and 
anode. Cathode and the anode is nothing but the electrodes. So, which electrode are set to be a cathode and which electrode are set to be a anode? When the electrodes they are connected to the negative pole or the terminal of the battery. Say for example, this is your electrode. Okay, this is your electrode. This is your electrode. And we have this in a or immersed in an electrode. That is the solution. So both are electrodes. So which electrode are set to be a cathode and which electrode are set to be a anode? When they are externally connected to the battery. Okay. Now battery has the two poles. One is the negative pole that is called as the negative terminal and the second one is the positive pole that is called as the positive terminal. So say for example this is your negative terminal or the negative pole of the battery and this one is the positive terminal of the battery. When this electrode is connected to the negative terminal or the negative pole of the battery then that electrode has to be a Cathode. So, cathode is the simple electrode when they are connected to the negative terminal of the battery are said to be a cathode. On cathode, always the gain of electron that is the reduction reaction takes place. Remember, on cathode, the gain of electrons, gain of electron that is called as the reduction reaction takes place. Okay. Exactly opposite that is when the electrodes they are connected to the positive terminal of the battery at that time that electrode are said to be a anode and remember on the anode always the loss of electron that is the electrons are loosed, lent or given when the loss of electrons are take place at that time that reaction are said to be a oxidation and always on the anode the oxidation reaction take place so that's why with anode uh, which electrode are said to be anode when the electrode is connected to the positive terminal of the battery are said to be an anode and that is why that anode are also called the positive electrode because they are connected to the positive terminal of the battery the cathode are called the negative electrode because the cathode or that electrode is connected to the negative terminal of the battery so these are the most important or the significance of the terms which are used in a electrolysis uh, I hope you understand the basic concept or the basic terms which are used in a electrochemistry. So with this we conclude our today's class. Uh, we will meet in the next lecture. Till then, goodbye. Thank you.